The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the New Media Factory. Some programs on this network might include strong images and language and may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. The biggest, most outrageous online show in Philippine history. 20 million fucking downloads. Interactive in 35 countries. Boys back with a vengeance in season two. Bigger, better, badder. Let's start off with an international call. Yesterday we took a call from India. Tonight it's Canada. Nice. Let's go to Ireland. Where in Ireland are you? Well, I'm in Dublin. Some people say that I'm a bad guy. They may be right. Let's go to Afghanistan. Holy shit, are you fucking really in Afghanistan? Yeah, man, what's up? Florida. What's up? I just found your show today, and I think it's great. Live from Hollywood and at the Beyond the Box studios in One Rockwell, Makati, it's Good Times with Mo, the podcast season two. The Bigger, Better, Badder podcast. Your questions about love, life, sex, and more sex are all answered and occasionally made fun of here. And now the man who loves women and dudes, but not in the same way. The Philippine genius, DJ Mo Twister. All right, welcome to the podcast on this Tuesday night, Holy Week night, meaning this will be our last episode before we take a short little break and come back on Monday. It is the 26th of March. My name is Mo. It's Good Times to know the podcast season two brought to you by Globe. Phone number 478-7954 if you want to call us, get yourself on the show. We're also on Skype, the Good Times podcast. You can text us at 927 927- Three six zero zero four eight five. If you want to get on the show via cell phone, so a lot of questions to take as usual. A lot of fun that we're going to have. My co-host tonight is a, a former beauty queen who turned chef. You don't really see that happen a lot. Former beauty queen turned chef. She's a foodie writer for Uno. We uh, kind of saw her in the last uh, Uno issue, and that's why we want to invite her here. She uh, wrote the article uh, I saw or Isa. <laughs> I came, I conquered for the magazine, so do check it out. Please welcome on the show, Lisa Dino. Hi, Lisa. How are you? Hi, everybody, and thanks for inviting me to all the listeners. Yeah, no. Hi. Hey, Mo. What's up? Hey, what's going on? Now, Lisa, how old are you now? Because, uh, I mean, Legal it seems like <laughs> we... we <laughs> <laughs> it seems like everybody on the show I have some really crazy old like history with. Oh I, it, it's either A, I'm super old, or B, I've been doing this for a really long time. Now, Lisa, I remember you when you were like a student. You would visit me on my radio show almost daily. Um, you were there, and, and all of a sudden I see you. You're beauty queen. You're a uh, fucking chef now. you right. fucking acting. <laughs> I mean, what? The, this is all... Uh, it's been a long this is all good stuff. Yeah, we haven't seen each other I mean, for what? Yeah, it's, I don't know. It's f- twelve, f- fourteen years, I think. Well, so, we we knew each other from since I was. Oh god. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, I was I was I'm seventeen, I think, when now. I. I'm thirty one now. I'm thirty one. Yes. So. Yeah, I was like seventeen or eighteen, uh-huh, I think, when I first met uh-huh. you. So anyway, well, it's nice to have you on the program. You're all grown up. You're mom, and you're doing things, right? I mean, yes. I, I look at always look at you as like a like third year high school student or something. But yes, thanks With for my being here. Neon green jeans and Spice Girls outfit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was bad times. All right, but Lisa, it's nice to have you here. You're you are uh, again eloquent and smart and stuff like that. So it's gonna be great because we. Got got a ton of questions that people will ask us about their love life, their sex life, their careers, whatever it may be. Uh, we're going to be uh, trying to knock all of these questions out as soon as we can. All right. So let's get okay. to it. Let's start with KJ, who is 39 Quezon City. KJ, you're on the show. What's up, buddy? KJ on Skype. Actually, I think we're taking his first Skype call right right now. Skype. Hello, KJ. Do we have him? Anyone? We should always have tested him prior to getting him, right? Yeah? No? Good. Hi. Okay, well, 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 we'll try to get his connection back in a little bit. Let's go to Joseph, who is on a cell phone. Joseph, you're 21 in Cavite, and this is a great question. Poor guy falls in love with rich girl. So I'm assuming this is the poor guy on, on the show. Uh, <laughs> Joseph, you're on the show. What's up? Hi, Joseph. Hi, Mo. 
What's up, man? This is uh, Lisa on the uh, program tonight. Hi. How Joseph. can we help you? You are in love with someone who's rich. Yeah, yeah. she's super, super rich. It's like her, her parents are both double. She's, they're, they're earning two million pesos a month. Wow. How much a month? They do two million? How do you know yeah, that? <laughs> each? Yeah, you know, no, no, no. Both of them. Like a million each. Because her oh, that's not super surgeon. rich. Well, yeah, that's yeah. money. That's not, that's not that's not insanely rare. I mean, the way you say it, I, mean, I thought the last name was more. the. Uh, I mean, you know, it's close. Um, all right. Well, anyway, so well, let me let me ask you this. Then. But you're not super poor either, are you? Oh, Jesus! Cell phones all. You're not that poor, are you? Or I mean, is it like how how poor guy, rich girl scenario are we talking about? Do you have a job? Well, I'm a fresh graduate then. But, you know, well, um, I, I see myself as a really poor person. Like, I grew up in a, in a province, and then my parents are, like, they're just earning maybe 15000 to 20000 pesos a month. Then this yeah, but, but stuff, listen, but your parents... Time. Your parents are not going to date her parents. You're going to date her. And and yes, that in the perfect world, that's the only thing that should matter. But you, what you need to bring to the table is at least some sort of promise that you can be successful. Exactly. You don't have to do two million a month. You don't have to be a fucking surgeon. You just have to look like you are bringing some kind of like productive lifestyle to the table when you're going to date this girl in front of her parents. Now, or you can be a lazy prick and she just likes you for whatever reason she likes you. But if you want to get along with the family, obviously you don't have to come up there, you know, driving up in a seven series BMW or whatnot. You just have to not look like a loser. Exactly. And I think you're going to be good because the two million a month for the both of them is not the Yaman level where they're going to look down at you because, you know, they're not on Philippine Tatler with two million a month. And who knows, you can make more once you're a fresh graduate. So all you need to do is prove nah, to them that you have a sense of responsibility. Take care he's of her. He's not going to make more than that. It's too <laughs> what do you do for a living? Let me ask you, what kind of job do you have? What? What kind of job do you have? I'm a nurse. See? Oh, working shit. in the U.S., you're... <laughs> no, no, but see the problem. The dad's a surgeon, so there's a huge downgrade in terms of like, you know, they're both in the medical field, but one's a surgeon and one's a fucking nurse. And then, yeah, of course. Well, listen, here's what you have going for yourself, dude. At least you're in the same field, and he might sympathize with that. Like maybe, well, surgeons are usually assholes, though. That's the problem. And and they're kind of assholes to everybody. I mean, if he was a doctor, maybe a little bit different. He'd be a little bit more like, you know, cool about nurses. Is, is he a dick? What? Is your girlfriend's dad an asshole? What? 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 I, I can understand. Sorry. Yeah, your cell phone's all fucked up. Is your girlfriend's, or I mean, is this guy, uh, this girl that you like, is her dad uh, uh, an asshole? Because a lot of surgeons are assholes. Actually, I don't know. You don't know. Never matter. All right. Well, so what's the question? What do you want from us tonight? Um, the, the main question is. How can I have the guts? You know, I want to have the self confidence. Um. Well, that's Le Lisa. Ultimately, confidence. It's up to you. I mean, it should come from you. I mean, you should know what you want, and if you really like her, and if you know yeah. that you can prove to the parents or you can prove to her that you're worthy of her love, then uh -huh. just go for it. I think she can. Just I don't think. Yeah. You and the I don't thing think is, that's even I, a problem. Like, a confidence isn't. You don't want to walk in there confident anyway. I mean, you don't want to go out there like, "Hey, what's up, pops?" You know, you don't want to. You just want to kind of go up there, be humble, just say be. you care about. Yeah, say you care about their daughter immensely. At least you have a job. I mean, you know, you kind of bring does she to like the table you? A responsible human being. Does she like you? Yeah. Does she like you? Actually, we're still we're in a, you know, getting to know each other stage, and we don't even, I don't exactly know what she's feeling right now. Are you dating? Yeah, they're kind of MUing is, is probably what they're, <laughs> what they're going through. All right, hey, listen, buddy, don't have, you, don't need, you don't need a lot of confidence with the parents. Just as long as you guys look like you're, you're happy and, you know, there are not a lot of problems uh -huh. in the relationship, hopefully the parents will see that. Don't panic yet just because, you know, they make a little bit of money. You're fine. Okay, so, 
You're not just as long as you have a job yeah. and more a than respectable the parents, job. It should be the girl you're trying to win over. Yeah, you're gonna be Good. fine. So the main the main point there is like um, just let me show my true self. Yes. Am I right? Yes. I don't even care if you don't tr- show your true self. Show a responsible and a promising self. And if that's you, then fantastic. Okay. All right. All right. Okay, thank thank you. you so much. Have a good one. Bye bye. Yeah, no worries. Have a good one. Bye bye. Wow. You know how how old is he? He is. Um, he was like twenty one or something like that. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think what age I was when I didn't care when I stopped caring about what the parents thought about me. I, I think early on, uh, Lisa, when you're in a relationship, you're like, or at least early on in your life, when you're in your 20s, 21, you're like, shit, man, the parents, man, they, you know, I'm so, I'm so scared. They might not like me and I have to do this and I have to pretend in front of them. And then mm-hmm. I think when you go, when you, when you get to become, I don't know, like 30, you're like, I don't care what the parents think about me. It's like, yeah. And it comes with maturity as well. To. You've experienced, you've been in relationships, you know what is, you know what you should do to, to, to keep that relationship. And the the whole parents the whole future comes when the relationship is pretty much solid already i don't know at least for me <laughs> yeah no i, t- I totally it's, agree it's just about really you i mean your relationship with a person first and then and then the whole parent thing the future maybe comes after when, when you know, things are really getting think- more serious i think you're right i think it does come with a, a sense of um maturity like when you start, maybe you're a lot more comfortable about yourself as well. When you're older, mm-hmm. you are more successful, so you don't have to like. In that case, with the last guy, be scared about what you have and what you don't have. You know, yes. I mean, you just kind of you are established, and you, you, this is what it is. Take it or leave it. All right, let's go to uh, KJ. Let's try KJ this time again. KJ thirty nine Quezon City. Hello, hello, KJ. Boy, we really have don't have this guy, huh? And he's got a great question. He wants to see his wife have sex with other men and he wants to see their and, and we've we've taken I've seen people like this before and I've taken calls like this it's always really interesting and wild when you like talk swingers. to these guys oh well, no oh it's no, just no, him not watching swingers yeah he wants to see his oh, wife get banged wow, by other a, dudes man interesting fancy i mean yeah, there's an element of the swinging lifestyle and there, there's an but it's it's always really fucking demented kind of uh, mentality and it's always yeah, it's always something I'd like to see. But you know what? Um, what what we have here, if you don't mind, Lisa, let's take a break because okay. I'm having audio problems, and uh, I think it's because we have some new equipment. And I know this is really crappy, but sorry, guys. Let's take a quick, quick break, and when we come back, we'll try to get this guy uh, KJ as well as we will talk to the other calls. We have Quinine in uh, Pampanga. We have who else? We got a bunch of calls here. Um, John in Cebu, as well as Ace, I think uh, Lisa. Also in Quezon City, we'll take right after this commercial break. Don't go away. It's Good Times with All the Podcast, Season 2, brought to you by Globe. Back after this. Stay tuned. We'll return after this commercial break. We're always on the move. It's really important for us to get better and stronger for every competition that we get into. For all the different lifestyles that we have, some of us are graphic artists, filmmakers. We still find ways to get together. We put a lot of effort in practicing and rehearsing. Minsan may mga bigla ang shows or auditions, so it's really important for us to get connected. I use my Globe group messaging to get a hold of everybody else. Malayo na rin ang narating namin, marami na rin kaming napuntahan. So it's really important to get connected. Hey, podcasters, Mo here. You ever watch the podcast, right? And you're sitting there and you're looking at our female celebrity guest and you're looking at her skin and you're like, wow, I'd love to have that complexion. Well, your answer is this. Glutamax, the official skin whitening partner of Miss Earth International. Available in capsules, soaps, lotion, deodorant, and face cream. Bikutis Mayaman with Glutamax. It's available in leading drugstores and supermarkets nationwide. 
what you've been missing on the factory. Were you the one who posted, James, regarding uh, the guidelines when it comes to checkpoints? Yes, I That's was. That's fantastic. Yes, I just made it up, but you know, I thought <laughs> it was made it up. Right? <laughs> I mean, this time of year, right? Elections. <laughs> you know, you never let the truth get in the way of a good story, okay? <laughs> Children do not follow this at home. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just so you know your rights, if you do get stopped by a checkpoint, you are not we're able to, to verify all of these, James. You're not allowed to run over them. That didn't make it here. So technically... <laughs> now, number two. Upon approach, uh, slow down. I guess that counts as not running them over. <laughs> Dim headlights and Slow turn down. on cabin lights. Okay. Cabin lights. Mm -hmm. <laughs> lock all doors of vehicles during inspection. Since lock? Oh, lock. They might get uh, pissed off because nope. you're locking But that's doors. the thing. Okay. This is where they get you. And this is actually, I know we're making fun of it a little bit, but yeah. this is a serious issue. We've seen some people genuinely harass. Drugs are planted. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and, and other things, stories. you know. Um, mm. A Justin Bieber CD is planted, which is even worse. Oh, yes, no. I've heard of that, you know. And there's no defense for that. Just there's really no defense. Yeah, it's like, it's but Your Honor, we found this. I <laughs> throw, throw the book at him. The then CD as well. You, you know, then after that you have to submit your cell phone and everything. Yeah. And ne next thing you know, you know you have a Justin Bieber ringtone. <laughs> oh, Catch James Deacon God. and the boys on Counterflow Wednesdays, 7:30 to 8:30, only here on the Factory. Sabrina's Kitchen is going to be back in your kitchen. Sabrina, we're hungry. Okay, it's coming. Every Saturday, 6.30 p.m. Lifestyle Network, where else? Podcasters, listen up. Big announcement. The Chevrolet Sonic is a dependable five-seater subcompact vehicle, and it delivers sufficient power, fuel efficiency, refined ride and handling, and a remarkable entertainment system. The Sonic is the perfect Chevrolet vehicle for those who are looking to make their daily city commute or weekend getaway drives more fun and exciting. It comes in two great body styles, the five-door hatchback and a four-door sedan. Equipped with a new 1.4-liter Ecotec engine with double continuous variable cam phase, that's CVC, the Chevy Sonic provides efficient power and quality driving performance. Now, to further highlight the youthful, sporty, and fun characteristics of the Sonic, Chevrolet has equipped the compact sedan with high-tech convenient features such as Bluetooth connectivity and audio streaming capabilities that are commonly found only on high-trim compact sedans. The Chevrolet Sonic is available at all Chevrolet dealers. It comes with a Chevrolet five-year warranty, three-year free roadside assistance, and the services of a 24-7 Chevy hotline. Call the show tonight and get your love problem answered. Follow us on Twitter at GTWM Podcast and visit www.motwister.com. Back on the podcast here on this Tuesday night, 26th of March. I apologize. Boy, that whole first gap, Lisa, was impossible to do. I was sitting there trying to give advice, but the problem is I couldn't hear myself in the headphones and we had all kind of audio problems. So I apologize. So we took that early break to regroup. We sound better now. I like it. I can hear my, my, I can hear my wonderful drone. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. At least you know what it's like. Good times with all the podcast season two. Brought to you by Glow. My name is Mo again. This is uh, Lisa Dino. She is a uh, chef, or at least an uh, up and coming chef. And we have had chefs on the program before. We had Irwan Yusuf here. And um, it really is. I mean, I don't want to say bandwagon trendy to, to, to be a, a chef, but boy, does everybody want to be a chef these days, right? I think it's those TV shows. And why Thanks Why would you? I mean, those TV shows, everyone's fucking screaming at you. Fucking Gordon Ramsay calling you an asshole and you suck and people still want to do it. It does happen, though, inside a kitchen. I, I work for Wolfgang Puck, so we have the same kind of heat happening inside a kitchen during service. Why would anyone want that shit for their lives? <laughs> well... 
you and really I only know thought what you're getting into before you and it's just really fucking food the world, huh? like like I, I never understood like i know you're into fashion right and th- this is why i hate fa- the world of fashion and fashion shows it's a bunch of people in the background first of all as an audience member this is me personally because i know you feel differently but because you're a fashion person but it, fashion shows are the most boring things in a, fu- a form of entertainment in the fucking universe. I mean, every corporate event, it's like, oh, here's our fashion show. I'm like, fuck, man, this sucks. Nobody likes the fashion show. Nobody. The only few people that do like it are the people that are in a fashion. And then secondly, in the fashion show, when you're backstage in these fucking shows, what is it? A bunch of designers just mad at everybody. He's fucking screaming. Ironically, I'm pissed off about it. But yeah, they're, they're, they're screaming and mad. I'm like, it's just clothing. For a guy fucking who relax. like fashion shows, you've, you seem to be pretty informed about what's happening behind <laughs> backstage. I, I, I don't like, f- I, I don't, no, I mean, I have to be there. Like I'm hosting an event, for example, right? And all of these events, and please, corporate companies, if you're listening, enough with the fucking fashion show for your event. Nobody likes it. Like, they put a band up there. Right. Fucking fashion shows are boring. And, and then in the background, when you're backstage, it's just a bunch of guys screaming at you. Hi, let's get on it. It's just, all, it's, I'm like, oh, I'm like, what's going on? Everyone, this is just clothing. Or, or, is anyone curing cancer in the room? No. Is anyone uh, contributing to society in some sort of way? No. Why is everyone so mad? It's clothes. It's the so, so anyway, back to the, the, I know, but okay, yeah, culinary, product, fine. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I, I'll tolerate a little yelling because food is important. We all need it. But, you know, it's not. Come on. Everybody just relax. Have a good time when you're there. Because during service, all. we're all about, like, time. Timing. We have to serve the first course in, like, a, three minutes. And we're doing, like, five consecutive, like five dishes all at the same time. Serving it. Especially with us. It's a fine dining restaurant. So we have to be on top of everything. So And you need someone to call it calling you a son of a bitch while you're doing it. Right? I mean, it, it, that's what you need? I, I don't like it. I don't like it. I had so many t- nights where I would just cry and just go to the bathroom and just really cry myself out and ask myself, like, what did I get myself into? Why am I here? What do I, I mean, you know, especially having lived here in the Philippines and you don't really have that kind of culture. So, yeah. you, ever, you ever sabotage any food? On purpose? Well, yeah, a lo- oh, asshole you, customer. Oh, yeah, a lot. Not for customers, but just me in training. I have wasted a lot of food supposed to be no 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 mistakes and then there's sabotaging there's full on like destroying it on purpose no uh, can't, can't admit that <laughs> yeah can't admit that sure, that's right yeah, it's, it's, it's damning it's like, it's like telling someone you don't pay taxes alright fair enough okay. let's go let's take some of these calls let's try it now because again we had audio problems galore in the first segment let's try KJ here we go KJ39 are you there hello do we finally have Hello. you? Or we continue with the audio? The guy who wants the wife to fuck other guys? Hello? Yeah. Hello. No, Hello. we have Good lost him. All right. Let's me? go to uh, Abby, who is 23. She's on the phone. Let's uh, line four. Abby, you are from Paranaque. What's up? Abby on line four. Hello, yes. Hello? Hi. What's up? Hello, yes. Hey. How are you? Yes. I'm sorry. How are you? Your question. What's up? Uh, I'm good. Yes, my question is because I'm dating this guy right now. So I just want to ask if I should continue dating him since he's married. Currently married, but they are, they are separated. So he, okay, he separated for a year, but he's just in that marriage. So he's not generally uh-huh. cheating on his wife, right? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And you want to ask whether you should break up with him just because of that? Yeah. Is he well, working towards it, 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 an annulment? It's really good to see each other, so wala rin asuran sa akin. Baka, baka they get back together. What's the, uh, what's the deal, like, why you can't see him often? He still lives with a family, or what's the problem? No, they're separated. But... I'm sorry, what? They're, I'm not they're living separately, pero kasi parang every week they see each other. Pero kasi siyempre sa girl, parang... Yeah, they get assured and they maybe they get back together since constantly mm, uh, yeah that is uh, shoot um, here's the problem there's no there's no divorce in the country right obviously so uh, yeah. when you date someone who's married but they're separated 
I, I don't feel like it's a problem. You definitely go go date someone who's who's separated. It's just it's the law that's fucking you over. <clears throat> but if this guy still sees his wife on weekends and you uh-huh. feel that kind of there's something inside of you that feels like they might get together or back together again, then I, I say, uh-huh. hey, listen, I tell him I'll, I'll still I would I would have dated you if you were separated, no problem. But it's you're separated uh-huh. and you see your wife constantly. That's where, why don't you go ahead and fix your situation first, and then we can go out when, when all of that is done. That's right. Mm-hmm. Does so, he have a kid? They Do they have kids? I'm sorry? Do they have kids together? How many kids are there? Oh, uh, yeah. They have one. A son. A son. So, baka naman yun yung reason. Yeah. Why they have to see still? I mean, it, that, that, but you have to explain that. Like, you have to go. Okay, this is my son's time, and I do this with my son. But if you're with a wife constantly on weekends, then it is kind of, of course, difficult on her end. So she being s- young son is with his wife, so every week they have. All right. This is hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, well, if you're not comfortable with that, then I'd say you talk to him about it. Tell him, hey, listen, I'm not really comfortable that you see your wife uh, all the time. And it, I mean, I don't want you to, I don't want to take you away from your son, but just at least mm-hmm. explain to me what's going on here so we can continue dating or not. Because, you know, Shempre, it, it's kind of weird. You are married. I'm just mm-hmm. you know, dating you because you're separated. All right? To, to, ano, to get in their family, pero dahil sa akin din, lalo lang magiging complicated, diba? Yeah, I, I, I get you. It's always, fuck man, our country sucks like ass, right? I mean, when you, when, when you don't have divorce well, and you have, people have to go guy, through these fucking problems. If the guy is going for her and, you know, he's made it clear that they're separated, then the ball is in his court. And until it becomes a problem that the guy is really pursuing that mm-hmm. ex-wife then 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 that's the only time maybe you should then you ask then then you talk you know or something i don't know all right mm-hmm. yeah all right all right oh, Abby. okay stay, stay yeah. in the relationship just talk to him you don't have to dump him you know uh, i will give it a little chance <laughs> so I'll all right baby. For the, uh, in love for the divorce <laughs> well, that's not going to happen. So, you, you mean you're going to? There has to be an annulment. So, I think you just talk to him and about just where you stand in his life, where the wife is, and kind of have all of these things work out. And then, hopefully, in uh-huh. ten years, when the annulment goes through, then you guys can get uh-huh. married on your own. But in the meantime, don't think about that stuff right now. Think about just dating and, and enjoying the relationship. Uh-huh. And then, you know, if, if yeah. it, it might not work out, it might work out. If it works out, I mean, and you guys want to get serious and stuff like that, then find out what your options are regarding the legalities of this relationship or not but in the meantime just hang mm-hmm. out with him no worries okay thanks baby yeah, thank, you. thank you so much Bye. I am gonna try and try Skype over and over until it works because we have too many good calls there let's try it again uh, and I don't know is this still KJ or what are we still trying to get this guy I, I suggest we cut our ties with him if this is not uh, unsuccessful this time KJ hello Hi, hello good evening there you go yeah. Jesus sorry we fixed our problem alright buddy you're 39 and you want to see your wife have sex with other men yeah. Wow. I don't know. It's <laughs> not like me. a serial killer. Dude, oh, there's a lot of things wrong with you. Um, uh, do you cheat on your wife? Uh, no. But you want her to cheat on you? I, uh, what I mean is, uh, I want to while she's doing it. But I'm watching. You know? So you want her to be fucked by another man and you want to watch while she's doing that. You want to be in the room yes. while she's getting banged yes. by another guy. Yes. And you don't want to be in a threesome. You don't want to jump in there, two guys, one girl. You just want to just sit down yeah. in a chair yes. and watch this. Why? Yes, yes, yes. I don't know. Maybe I just want to try something new. Uh, that's, not, that's not trying years. something new. <laughs> no, no, that, that's not trying something, something. new. Uh, I mean, are you, are you ready for the consequence? What if the girl ends up... You know how women are like when it's not just sex for us you know when we it has to be there has to be a connection and what if well, we make that connection Lisa, the, 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 there's not going to be that because if the, the fact that the wife agree if the wife even agrees to this means she's just as fucked up as this guy <laughs> is so don't worry about her falling in love i mean there's there's a lot of me- mental uh disorders going on in this phone call so wait um but you, do you ever get jealous uh yes 
So, because here's the thing, like when, when, when it comes to say threesomes, right? Say you're you're married and you go, let's just talk about threesomes. If, if for example, Lisa and I were married, and I'm like, hey, Lisa, you know, one of my biggest fantasies is if we can have another girl in the in you know in the bedroom, and then you being the great girlfriend or wife go, okay, I'm just gonna let you this one time, and then we're gonna have a fucking threesome, and you're not even gonna touch this girl because you're not you know you don't like girls, you just want me to fulfill my fantasy. It's gonna fuck up our relationship for sure. Forever. So if you're ready, as Lisa said, if you're ready for the consequences, your marriage is going to get destroyed if you let this happen. And secondly, oh. there's something completely wrong with you as a, as a husband, the values you have for this relationship, and even just you as a person to think that this is a great idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no Actually, she, she agree. She, okay. No, that's okay. a different story. Um, Parang we just want to to do our sexual fantasy. Parang ganon. Do you have any particular person in mind? Is it something? Is it someone who uh, do you guys know? That's our problem with women. <laughs> How old is your wife? Thirty-three. Yeah. Uh, huh. Okay. And what kind of? I mean, did she come from a fucked up background, like growing up? Uh, no. Are you sure? Because if your wife has agreed to this, and she's kind of odd that she even agreed to marry you, I have a feeling that she's just kind of, she's all over the place in, 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 in terms of like what she wants out of her life. I, I think you guys need to see, I, I think you guys need to get some help, to, to be honest, some professional help. Because I, I, honestly, KJ, as, as charming as you sound, and as nice of a man as you sound, this is really bad news. Do you have kids? Yeah, three boys. Oh, shit. Oh, no. All right. I can't wait. Three future criminals in the society is what, we, is what we're going to see. <laughs> right. Can't you get something else? I mean, something less than that? <laughs> family destroying fantasy? Maybe so gadgets? So, what, what, what did you advise me? <laughs> I would, fuck, I don't know. Something so, you can do just, with each other. <laughs> with your wife. Yeah, I mean, read, read your Fifty Shades, throw a couple ideas out of there. I mean, because listen, KJ, if you love your wife, obviously, if you truly love your wife, you know this is a bad idea. If you truly value your marriage, you know this is a marriage killer. If you truly value your role model status to your kids, you know that this is fucking insane. It is bad across the board with all the things important in life. Just so you can see your wife get fucking doggy styled by another man. Really, the four minutes of visual that you're going to have is not worth it at all for yeah. the fucking lifetime of torment that you're going to bring from an act like this. Do you get it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Good. All right, KJ. And I don't mean to be your name, you know, KJ. I don't, I don't want to fucking <laughs> pop your balloon here and fuck up your fantasy, but this is too much. All right. And then, come on, you guys are fucking parents. I mean, I, I'm just as upset at your wife as I am with you for her to agree to this shit. I know. Well, it's a fantasy. All right, buddy. It still All is right. a fantasy right now, so don't, yeah, <laughs> give KJ, it to him. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it, KJ. Jesus Christ. There's okay, so many things okay. going on. You guys are so young. All right. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Good Lord. Oh, my God. Um, let's go to Anna. Anna, you're 20. You're in Parinyake. Hi, Anna. Hi. Anna. What's up, baby? Okay. Again? Um, How are you? So What's your I'm question? 20. I'm yep. 20, and I'm still a virgin. And I've tried masturbating, but I don't feel anything. Like um, I do get wet when I'm turned on, but when I ch and I whenever I rub against my pillow, I actually feel something. But when I sure. touch myself using my finger, I don't feel anything. I mean, when you maybe you're I'm really the wrong bothered. Way. Well, show us, Lisa. Again? <laughs> sorry, sorry. No, no, nothing. Go ahead. Continue. You're you don't feel anything with um, the fingers, and then. Yeah, so I'm a virgin, and like I've never felt an orgasm. What an orgasm feels like. And it's frustrating. I mean, um, yeah, it's frustrating. All right, well, I'm bothered because well, 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 okay. I don't know if it's a medical condition or what. No, no, or no. Am listen, I there just are doing it wrong. 
Well, it could be two things. It could be one, uh, you're just not ready to have an orgasm. Like you're just, I mean, you're 20. Some girls don't have an orgasm, you know, in the early ages. Uh, it'll, it'll kick in eventually. Some of them don't get them at all. Um, and I, I don't think it's a medical problem. I think it's just built that way. And then two, you might be doing it wrong. I mean, when you touch yourself, do you put your fingers inside you or are you rubbing your clitoris? I mean, what do you, what's the masturbatory? <laughs> I tried both, and like it doesn't work, talaga. And are you doing a nice, slow, rhythmic kind of, you know, yes. uh, caressing, so or are you jackhammering your your clitoris? Because <laughs> here's the thing: is I, I when I went to my clitoris, uh, uh, Lisa, because I I I <laughs> just uh, tried. Have you tried yeah, a vibrator? Uh, okay, have you tried a vibrator? Um, I haven't done that far. All right, Lisa, but you're I, the expert here. What, what should she do? I mean, how does she get? <laughs> when, how old were you when you when you got your first orgasm, Lisa? Oh wow! <laughs> God, I feel like I'm talking to a high school student all over again. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of weird. It's like I'm interviewing our, our younger selves. Uh, how, how old were you when you first had your uh, first orgasm, Lisa? Oh my God! And how'd you do it? You're the one with the vagina here. Help! It took help a while for me to get there. I mean, I, I mean, I'm married See? now, so maybe oh. 23, 24. Yeah. Is when and, and you got and it via it, masturbation? No. <laughs> oh, you had a guy go down on you. That's the first time you had the orgasm. Really? No, not really. No, because here's what I'm. Here's what I tell. Uh, this is why I love Anna. Anna, because I want you to get your first orgasm with yourself. Don't go the Lisa route. Again? Don't let someone else do it. I want you to get your first orgasm with yourself. You doing it to yourself. This is great. You're starting on the right path here. It's just how to get that orgasm to work well for you. Um. Are you watching any kind of pornography or anything that kind of really gets you going when you're doing this? No, I haven't watched one. Like, yung, when you pressure yourself, no. Like, but I've seen sex scenes, but that's... I, I haven't seen porn, so... <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen sex scenes, but that's how far I've gotten. Yeah, listen, you're, you're, you're in your baby steps right now. That orgasm's gonna kick in. Mm-hmm. Trust me. You're really, really young. You're 20. You're, again, it's, it's gonna, it'll be there shortly. Just keep working at it. I mean, make sure to put a lot of, uh, get a lot of attention on the, on the clitoris there. Get, get, get some lubrication going. So, you know, you can kind of, it feels a little bit better. Um, I mean, really, just everything. Have the ambiance right. The material you're watching, let it be right. Um, and then if the fingers really don't work, maybe you want to level up and try to get a vibrator, but that's a little too intrusive, I think. I, I think the, right now at this stage, and you know, it's like, you don't want to put a big dick inside, a big ass fucking vibrator inside you, especially if you haven't kind of explored your own vagina with your hands. So let's start with the hands. Let, let's keep, okay. keep working at it. I mean, a- MWF, just, you know, give yourself a day off and then start again the next night. And then, you know, when you get that orgasm, call us back. I, you, it'll be right around the corner. You're almost there. So trust like, me. I eventually get bored. Like when I try to touch myself and I don't feel anything. So I eventually get bored and just stop. You're not touching <sighs> it the right way. But I can't believe my mom is watching this show right now. Well, there you go, Lisa. That's what you do when you fucking invite the parents to watch. Um, and uh, keep going because I, I think <laughs> once you get the orgasm and you finally hit it, right? You're gonna enjoy it. That that boring process of getting there is is you're gonna actually relish it. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with me. I'm just oh, not there's doing completely it. nothing wrong. No, again, you're you're in baby steps here. Like if you're, it's like learning how okay. to ride a bike. I mean, it gets boring when you're going around the block over and over. But you just learned how to ride a bike. Uh, ride a bike. Next thing you know, you're a fucking tour de France, and then all of a sudden, it's good stuff. You, you get what I mean? You have to work your way up there. You're gonna be fine. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, baby. Okay, thank Don't you. Don't worry about it. You're good. Your, thank your you. vagina's fine. All right. Bye bye. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Oh um, <laughs> bye. Let's go to CJ. CJ, you're 21. You're in Batangas. What's going on, CJ? Another. Hello, Paddy. Hello? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, Paddy, CJ. Pong magtanong ng dirty question with our today host. Sure. sure, it's Holy Week. Of course. Yeah, it's of course. perfectly normal to have a dirty question on Holy Tuesday night. Very, What's up? very timely. Um, I know you, hindi na po kayo virgin. How many times you po kayo nagsesex? Huh? 
How many? Ano? How many? How, how many times? How many times? A day or have a week? How many times a day? Na no, no, a week. No, or are, are, are we having sex? Whenever no, I organize. Yes. Yeah. Please <laughs> Well, I'm, when I'm involved with Lisa, someone, how often I, are you organizing? What? <laughs> how often are you organizing? I try to, every single time I do it, I, you know, that's the goal. <laughs> yeah, and, and how's the sex life it, in the married life with you these days? Is it, is it uh, several times a week or what are we looking at? Once a week? Every chance every we get weeks? when we're free. When we're <laughs> ah, <laughs> it's in decline. It's in decline. I understand. I understand. Yeah. Um, listen, it, it, CJ, do you have a better question than that? Only because, like, I'm not in a relationship, so it, it's not. It's it's less than Lisa's, I'm sure, and it really is different with everybody. I mean, it's not like a standard. Everyone doesn't have sex once a week. Everyone doesn't have two times a week. I mean, some people go years, some people go months, some people go weeks, some people go hours without having it. Do you have another question? I mean, obviously you're virgin. Yes, we we know that. By the way, you. Organizing. Um, anything else you want to know about it? Naranas, did you try threesome? No, I haven't. No, I was. No, I'm curious. Haven't. I mean, no. you know, but I've never. No. Really? Would you go two girls? No, or two I mean, guys? you know, it's something that you talk about sometimes with your partner. And I've never had talk that conversation. About, okay, with my I've partner. never really tried it at all. It's something that I've never had that conversation, Lisa. I don't think it's actually <laughs> something you talk about. Now, wait a minute. Would you go two girls? <laughs> Obviously, you would go two girls, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Why would you do that? You, why, you, you I mean, no, if your husband's allowing you another just penis. talk about it. <laughs> it's 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 never pursued. What your question? Sorry. No, I mean, um, my question was like, no, sorry, if, if I may ask, it's like, why would you, if, I mean, most girls, do they want the two guys or the two girls in, in the threesome fantasy? Well, I think the two girls is more tolerable than two guys. I wouldn't want two guys, like, freaking me over, you know? <laughs> really? Because I, what the, isn't it supposed to be like what you like? I mean, well, I mean, okay. Does that mean then there's a hidden lesbian, lesbian in every female? I guess until you meet the guy, or maybe the other way around. <laughs> no, I'm saying it's like, do you have a? a by the way, we'll we'll hang up with this guy because I want to talk about this. This is really interesting stuff. Thanks for the call, by the way, oh, CJ, okay. and for wasting our time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay. Here, here's what it is. Okay, if you, if you, okay, you're, you're a straight female, yes. You're a heterosexual female, correct? Mm-hmm. Oh, are you not? Yeah. <laughs> did you have, did you have a, um, did you have relationships with females prior to your marriage? No. Okay. All right. So, all right. So you're generally a heterosexual female. Yeah. And if the, when you have this conversation of threesome with your husband or boyfriend or whoever in the past, uh. Your the first thing in your mind is another female in the bedroom with you guys. I mean, do you get what my point is? It's it's because you're quote unquote heterosexual that a female would opt for another female instead of another male because then you know you'd at least have two penises. Then you can yeah cool. No, no. Well, for me, it's all about connection. So it's I'm I wouldn't. I mean I'm. It's all about the connection yeah. that you make with that person. It's it's really not about gender. Like for me, so whoever you're comfortable with, guy or girl, if the threesome were to happen, you'd take that person in. If yeah. I'm saying if if yeah. Right. Yeah, I have to say if because your mom's watching. She's probably having a heart attack. She's like, oh my god, my daughter, what happened? <gasps> my my mom, my aunt. <laughs> I didn't know it was, I thought it was going to be an interview. <laughs> <laughs> no, here we take calls for people's okay. lives. It's awesome. Lisa, you're fine. You're doing fine. <laughs> let's, let's take a break. When we come back, we got more questions. Um, our phone was 478-7954. You can catch us on Skype, the Good Times Podcast. It's Good Times Mo, Season 2, brought to you by Globe. Don't go away. Back after this. Stay t- 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 we'll return after this commercial break. It was a very memorable experience namin dalawa kasi plano namin, simple wedding lang, pero yung kinalabasan niya, extraordinary one. 
Ang kinagabihan pala ng wedding namin, August 7. Grabe na talaga yung ulan nun. Yung mga atin ng kasal namin kasi nangihingi sila ng confirmation kung tutuloy ba namin yung kasal kasi sobrang taas na din ng tubig. Pati yung photographer po kasi tinatanong kung tuloy ba namin yung kasal kasi medyo may tubig pa. Ang dami na namin na receive na calls. Pati kami dalawa nagtatawagan. Hmm. Pero ang re-reply namin sa kanila, tuloy talaga ang kasal kahit na ano mangyari. Buti na nga lang kamo ang nakapag-register na kami agad din nung kinagabihan pa lang ng... Naka-angli na kami parehas. Uh, Naka-onit uh, na kami, combo ng blue. Kaya hindi masyadong hassle. Hmm. Pag-text na, pagtatawagan sa ibang naming mga kasali sa kasal. Hmm. Pagpasok ko ng doon sa iba, ba para <laughs> Hindi ko alam na nag-march pala lahat ng entourage ko sa, ano, sa tubig. Bago po kami nabas ng simbahan, sinalubong po kami ng mga tao na nakakita sa amin. At talagang na-amaze sila, nagulat sila. Kaya yung nag-request sila ng ano doon ng, ng kiss. kiss. Pero talagang tama yung sinabi ni Father na for better or for worse, through thick or thin, through text and calls. <laughs> tama na, tuloy din yung kasal namin. We're glad to be globe. Hey podcasters, Mo here. You ever watch the podcast, right? And you're sitting there and you're looking at our female celebrity guest and you're looking at her skin and you're like, wow, I'd love to have that complexion. Well, your answer is this, Glutamax, the official skin whitening partner of Miss Earth International. Available in capsules, soaps, lotion, deodorant, and face cream. Bikutis mayaman with Glutamax. It's available in leading drugstores and supermarkets nationwide. What you've been missing on the factory. And now we're gonna show you guys the new beta that just came out yesterday. It's God of War Ascension, the private beta for and PlayStation Plus. PlayStation Plus. Let's watch it, right? It's nice and we can playing already. Yes. Yep. There you go. And perfect timing. <laughs> perfect timing. Well, before that, I was, I was kicking ass. So go with the theme of the show, How Not to Play. It's Robert Rice and Friends with Alfonso Martinez, Mickey Han, and Nigel Zalameo. Fridays, 6 to 7 p.m., only here on The Factory. Then the maid got jaundice. Jaundice is different from jaundice. Jaundice is buntis, like that. But she does not... <laughs> Tears off! Anyway, John <laughs> does not know. <laughs> this is professional show. I will put the merienda here. <laughs> so, John Tis. And I am now happy to present to you Carlo Tayo. Look at me, the third. I'm in Tayo. I'm in snacks. What is this? What is this? What is this? What is this? Tapo, dito ba? Pwede ba dyan? Pwede, pwede. Consider. <laughs> Yan, yeah, para sa show mo, ha? O. Oh. Aray ko, ang mayaya ba? Pwede ba itong ano? <coughs> Zora, pang ano ba ito? Oil absorbing? Pwede pa itong pang nose line? <laughs> oh. Okay, may caution. A when, caution! When caution! <laughs> ah! Masang glamour te! Oh. When used for the first two weeks, more pimples will appear. <laughs> Burahin na, burahin na siya. Oh my God! Damn! Sorry, ma'am. Pabasa ka ng gamot! Ito talaga? Pwede bago yan. Don't worry. Buti ako sa mata lang. Hindi naman nagkakapin. Buti dapat pala caution mo na yung pinasin natin. Join your host, Carrots Nazareno, on Live Love Lulz every Thursday, 7.30 to 8.30, only here on The Factory. Sabrina's Kitchen is going to be back in your kitchen. Sabrina, we're hungry! Okay, it's coming! Every Saturday, 6.30 p.m., Lifestyle Network, where else? Podcasters, listen up. Big announcement. The Chevrolet Sonic is a dependable five-seater subcompact vehicle, and it delivers sufficient power, fuel efficiency, refined ride and handling, and a remarkable entertainment system. The Sonic is the perfect Chevrolet vehicle for those who are looking to make their daily city commute or weekend getaway drives more fun and exciting. It comes in two great body styles, the five-door hatchback and a four-door sedan. Equipped with a new 1.4-liter Ecotec engine with double continuous variable cam phase, that's CVC, the Chevy Sonic provides efficient power and quality driving performance. 
Sports. Now, to further highlight the youthful, sporty, and fun characteristics of the Sonic, Chevrolet has equipped the compact sedan with high-tech convenient features such as Bluetooth connectivity and audio streaming capabilities that are commonly found only on high-trim compact sedans. The Chevrolet Sonic is available at all Chevrolet dealers. It comes with a Chevrolet five-year warranty, three-year free roadside assistance, and the services of a 24-7 Chevy hotline. Good Times with Mo, the podcast. Call the show tonight and get your love problem answered. Follow us on Twitter at GTWM Podcast and visit www.motwister.com. Back on the podcast here on this Tuesday night, 26th of March. Again, no show tomorrow. We'll be back on Monday for the uh, Holy Week break. Are you ready to get your game on? Chevrolet Philippines brings you the Chevrolet Sonic. It's a sporty and stylish subcompact car that has a 1.4 liter Ecotec engine with six-speed automatic transmission that provides dependable speed, power, and fuel efficiency. Chevrolet Sonic is also equipped with high-tech features such as steering wheel mounted audio controls with USB auxiliary and Bluetooth full audio streaming connectivity. Sonic is available in hatchback and sedan variants. There to take on life's challenges head on and complement your A-game with the all-new Chevrolet Sonic. Visit your nearest Chevrolet dealership or log on to ChevroletSonic.com.ph Check out the all-new 2013 Chevrolet Sonic. Game on. All right. Phone number 478-7954. Skype is The Good Times Podcast. Our guest tonight is Lisa Dino, chef, actress, former beauty queen, mom, and eh, flirted with the idea of having a threesome. But those are those days are gone, Lisa. Yeah. Maybe one day again. Maybe. <laughs> All right, let's. I want to talk about some movies that you're doing, but let's take one call here, and then we'll get to some of these movies that you're doing because I, I, I really want to know. I know that you have been cited uh, before for exceptional acting, and by the way, I, I'm, uh, I was uh, kind of pleasantly surprised. I mean, I never really pegged you as an actress when I saw you again when when we were younger, and it's just nice to to know that you've been recognized internationally for your acting ability. So this is all good. We'll we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Let's get Kay here, who's in Australia. She is 24, if I'm not mistaken. Hi, Kay. How are you? Hi, 26. <laughs> 26. I'm sorry. I was going, again, you know, every time I fuck up your ages, everyone, it's just, I'm trying to go through memory. There's a list of calls here with a list of names, and there's a bunch of, like, fucking ages and locations, and sometimes I kind of get it mixed up. So I'm sorry. You're 26, That's Kay, fine. Australia. I don't mind being 24. Yeah, me too, man. Yeah. All right. <laughs> where are you from in Australia? Melbourne. Nice. All right. What's up? Um, so yeah, uh, I'd like to know how to deal with this situation, which I kind of have decided what to do anyway, but I want to hear what you want to, you've got to say. Um, I sort of cheated. Well, that's stupid because I, yeah, I did cheat on my boyfriend before as a way of getting even for him cheating on me. Love Uh, it. Hey. Yeah. Love it. Continue. Yeah, yeah, you do? <laughs> um, yeah, why not? <laughs> You're young. Uh, might and, as well. And right? he, this, this happened like years and years and years ago. And um, apparently he was cheating on a friend who, was, uh, who I was confiding in, which was really not so awesome. And so oh, yeah. I got drunk. And as a way of getting back to him, I texted this big time guy who I met. And he's like big time and kind of. Yeah, I had a thing and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, so yeah. I'm s- sort of stuck whether or not I should tell my boyfriend that I did that. Oh, you know, it's not revenge if they don't know. It's you. I mean, you, you get what I mean? It's, it's, it's actually, 
difference. It, it's completely opposite, man. Because now, now you just had sex with someone else that only you know about. You want to tell them that you banged another guy. And a big time guy. But see, here's my thing is, what do you want from your relationship with your boyfriend? I mean, are you guys still together? He's my fiance. <laughs> Holy shit. I don't know. <laughs> no, the thing Love is, it. I've gotten over this whole thing, like, like years ago, I, you know, because um, I sort of got attached to the guy, but I've kind of forced myself to do the right thing and just get over it and get over myself because this big time guy, it was never going to, you know, it was never going to happen anyway. Yeah, it's not going to materialize. Whoa, yeah. And wow, wow. Okay. Yeah, that, with, this the, is... with the wedding. Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, go ahead. Continue. I'm just, go ahead. Uh, this is a great story. It's just I'm, 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 I'm entertained. Anyway, continue. Go. <laughs> and so you know, with he's my fiance now, and you know we're getting married and all that. But like, I don't know. The guilt is killing me. <laughs> this is great. Um, okay. All right. Here we go. Let's 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 break it down for you. When you Okay, when you found out he cheated on you, did you guys break up? Um, I uh, I didn't really find out till maybe four months after. <laughs> okay, Which and is uh, I was really pissed off and wanted to do that. But did you did you agree to forgive him when you found out? The, the thing because, is, because I, cause I, I'm all for you, I'm all for you banging the other guy. That's fine, but it's supposed to bang the other guy and then break up with your boyfriend. That's the that's what you're not bang another guy and then get married. That, like, that's the last thing I want you to do. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh God. Um. So so you get what I mean? Because now, okay, here's the thing. Okay, you had revenge sex. And mm. the great part of revenge sex is t- is telling the other guy that who fucked you over that you just fucked another guy who had more money than he did and who had a bigger dick than he did and had a better car than he. I mean, really, you just got to take you bring it home with with all the details. You know, made you orgasm three times like you've never had in your life. You know, what I mean, you, you just kind of oh, whether it's a lie. Yes. You're right. <laughs> Whether it's oh, see, there you go. He did make you work because it was exciting. So you 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 tell all of these things to your boyfriend, so he feels like shit because he made you feel like shit. You just, in <laughs> fact, letting him feel the way you felt. But the problem is, you don't fuck another guy, have your three orgasms in his BM7 series, and then fucking tell him, <laughs> and then not tell him, and in fact marry him. That's really kind of not the game plan. I know. The thing is, um, when I decide, when I found out like four or five months after that he was cheating on me with, you know, this friend who I was confiding in, um, we were already okay. We kind of got over that rough patch and I kind of decided, decided to give him a chance and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And we were okay that time. And then I sort of confirmed it with my friends. And when I confirmed my doubts, um, that's when I kind of thought, well, I'm going to get even, which I never actually did. Uh, are you in love with your boyfriend right now? A lot. Your fiance. I'm yes. sorry? Yep. You yep, are a lot. I am. Okay. Then, then, uh, then don't tell him, obviously. Hmm. Oh, would, you, would that be considered dishonesty or? Uh, probably, but both of you guys have been dis- dishonest to each other. So whatever. But I found out. <laughs> About his dishonesty. Yeah, did you confront Kate, him about it? Yeah, Sorry? she did, right? Yeah, you, you confronted him about it. You confirmed she it with confirmed the friends. She confirmed it with the friends, but did, did yeah, she confirmed confirmed the guy? And then confirmed with him. Right, and he admitted it and everything. Sure as gold. I mean, like, it is uh, good to go. He, in fact, slept with your friend. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, Man, uh, listen. well, I don't know that they slept together, but I know that he kind of had a thing with her. Okay, well, let's just assume he slept with her. God. Um, oh, let's assume that. <laughs> okay, Kate, K- K- listen, love, don't tell him. I mean, if you want to just cut away this part of your life and this part of your relationship and let it erase forever, 
then start today. Just cut it out. Don't worry about not telling him. Yes, it's dishonest, but who cares? Because come on. I mean, it's not a tangible thing. You know, uh, you, you had sex with this guy. He, you, you were broken hearted. You were frustrated yeah. and angry that not only did he cheat on you, he cheated on you with your fucking friend, which makes it even worse. And then the pain is unbearable. And I, I think we've all been through it. So you went out and you acted upon it. Now, I would like, in, like in a perfect mo world, it would be you cheat on this guy who's better and bigger and gave you more orgasms and you know money and all of that shit, and then you tell your boyfriend and then you dump his ass because he needs to feel that. I mean, especially that he cheated with your friend. I mean, that's fucked up, right? But the fact that you have just kind of swept that part of the shit under the rug and that you've agreed to marry him and at this very moment you're super in love with him and you don't want to lose him, then don't say anything. Is it wrong that I think of the other guy? No. So- <laughs> oh, Are you well, thinking yes. about the other guy? I, I don't think you should get married. I still don't I think do, you should get married. I do sometimes. I do sometimes just out of, you know, just... Well, yeah, I mean, it was exciting times. And, and, and the guys, like you said, he's big time guy. So why not, man? I mean, it's like, it's like if you're, uh, if, it's like if you're a guy, you're a normal guy, and then you have a chance to have sex with, say, your celebrity crush or a celebrity. Your, your, your mind is always going to go back to that day because it was one of the great achievements in life. You know, that's fine. But I don't think you should be getting married. I think you, I think both of you should have broken up. <laughs> But if you want to forgive, then fine. But if you're going to forgive, you have to forgive both him for what he did and, and you have to forgive yourself for what you did. And then you just erase that shit from your life and you start in you and no one has to know except the 150,000 people that download the show on a daily basis. <laughs> okay. Should I stop talking to the other guy? <laughs> um, uh, um, we yes. don't talk on that same level anymore. It's like... You know, you should not we, be talking we, to this guy okay. at any level whatsoever. If it's right, just revenge deleted. sex, it's just revenge. It's totally justified if you. Yeah, you unless just unless you keep him communicating with this You're guy. You're getting married. When are you getting married, baby? Uh, sometime this year. Love it. Yeah, you should not be talking <laughs> to this guy right now. No way. All right. <laughs> not at all. All right. All right. But Thank you guys. should be calling off this engagement, though. I mean, I, 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 oh. I still don't feel strongly <laughs> about this. No. I don't. I don't like it. But hey, listen, it's your life. It's your life. And again, cut it off, man. I mean, really, cut cut this ugly wrinkle on the on this piece of paper away and just kind of tear it off and then throw it away forever. Okay? You're fine. Yeah, thanks. And and, and Kay, I'm right about this. You're fine. Don't no need to tell. Thanks for the You're call. Always- Appreciate it. I know. Have a good one. <laughs> bye bye. Yeah. Let's go to Ashley, who is seventeen years old, boyfriend. Cannot stop ejaculating on her face. Love it. Oh. Ashley, 17, what's up? Ashley, on the cell phone? Did we lose? Hi, Ashley. No, wait. Uh, we'll get her. Oh, we lost her. Okay, well, let me talk to Lisa then. Lisa. Yeah. Movies. So what is this? What do you want? I mean, uh, what do you want out of life? First, you're a chef. You're a chef at Wolfgang, Wolfgang Puck, which seems like a big-time uh, restaurant, and, and now you're doing movies. What do no, you want out of life? You're doing too many things. I was an actress first and before I ventured into culinary. When I moved to the U.S., that's when I started. I went to school. I went to Le Cordon Bleu and then eventually worked for Wolfgang. But so, now you're in you're, you're in the Philippines shooting two movies. Yeah, because um, I I won recently um, last yeah the, the award yeah thing. so it kind of yeah. like inspired me again to just come back and and pursue projects here. I mean, opportunity opened up for me to keep on doing it i mean i this is my passion I've so what always, movie are these are these like you know your garden variety like your your mainstream filipino movies are you going to get into international films what kind of films are you shooting these days i a lot of indie films i've been doing a lot of indie films since 2005 and 6 and before even before i moved to the us i was already venturing towards that route and then um, even when i was living in in LA, I would fly here to, you know, have my little creative satisfaction doing movies, and yeah, I just got lucky. One of the films I did was was um, competed in a f- festival, and I I won in the festival as best actress. So yeah, so yeah, so it's it's you know, so it just really just pushes you to 
keep on doing. And can you talk about the names of like well, the titles of these things? Um, or are, I they're kind of still vague about. I did this movie. It's entitled Compound. It's a film about. It's a psychological thriller with John Arcelia, Jake Macapagal. I was. I played the role of this manipulating maid. I I was pretty much controlling the the persons living in that compound, like different houses in that co- compound and yeah it's it's very it was my very first independent film and i it it competed in the Manhattan International Film Festival in 2011 yeah. and i i was fortunate you know i i it competed among maybe 38 global entries from all over the world and i won um the lone acting achievement award like they have this award for the best actress I mean, or best performer actually because it was just one award for both the actor and the actress. And you did you know that you were going to take this path like I've like the acting path or it was something you've always wanted? When I when I started when I got into college because when we met I was just barely out of high school, right? <laughs> I I third year I started getting into theater. So I was in stage, I was on stage, I was working, I was, it was my elective. And then I joined a pageant and then I went the TV route. I started doing a lot of um, TV series for GMA7 and I just found my passion there. I just realized how much I love acting. And So, well, you wanted to be then a celebrity from day one. I mean, if it's theater, it's TV, it's movies, it's fucking even culinary to, to a certain extent. I mean, you want to be a personality. Honestly, I feel like acting, it's it's really the craft of acting that I really want to get into. I mean, I, I wouldn't even call myself popular. I'm not famous, but... Sure. <laughs> yeah. But I love the craft. Yeah. I I You're love famous tonight after finding out that you want to do a threesome. I guess so. <laughs> that's right. Thanks to you. Yeah. So, well, yeah. hey, listen, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> All right. Well, cool. Well, well again, we'll, we'll throw out those. Uh, yeah. Now, can you tell us like what uh, the upcoming movies? When are they going to be out, and what are they called? I have this movie that uh, one of the entries for the New Wave Cinema category of the Metro Manila Film Festival just last December. It's called In Nomini Matres. It's in the name uh-huh. of the mother. It's sure. a story about this principal dancer. It's a flam- it's a love story with flamenco. I also dance flamenco. It's so it's a flamenco movie, and um, I I I also got recognized for that. Thank you. And it's gonna be it's we're doing a um, I think a Luzon wide theater showing of the movie this coming May for Mother's Day. So cool. that's something for people hey. to watch out for. In nomini matters the right. title, yeah. Got you. good stuff. Hey, I'm so proud of you. Good for you. All right, let's go to uh, let's okay, let's try this Ashley girl again. I think she's on the cell phone. Ashley, 17 years old. What's up? Um, hi. Ashley. Hi, yeah. Ashley. Your um, boyfriend's ejaculating on your face. Huh? Your boyfriend is 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 putting his sperm all over your face. Wow. Yeah, and he won't stop. Oh, what a pig, right? Fuck. You know, listen, I'll tell you this, Ashley. I'm 35. Uh, never in my life, not even once, I ever, have I ever ejaculated on a female's face. Um, I, I can't say that I don't want to. It seems really cool. I see it in porn films all the time. But I don't think I could ever go down to that level of degradation where, where you kind of just ejaculate on a person's face and let them kind of like, you know, on their eyeballs and it get in in their nostrils. It's really kind of sick, but cool and disturbing all at the same time i just want to put it out there because it's also rather normal to have a boyfriend that won't ejaculate on your face especially if you're 17 uh ashley just because yeah. you know I, i don't i don't want you to start so young with the the hardcore porn moves you want to work up to that kind of level of being ejaculated on every single time that you have sex so your question Yeah, how do I make how do I make him stop if uh, for example you you guys are doing it and then and then he's about to you know ejaculate and then you tell him stop and then no, not there and then but he's still going to force it there. You give him two options. A uh yeah, if you ejaculate be. on my face again, we're never going to have sex again or B if you ejaculate on my face again, I'm going to fight I'm going to fucking bite your dick off. Just choose which one he wants. It's win-win for you because you're in control here. 
You're the one. I mean, he's the one who apparently needs to be, uh, he needs to be ejaculating and he wants to do it on your face. You tell him, you know, you do that one more time and I'm, I'm not going to do this anymore with you. Or two, I'm going to bite your fucking, the, t- the tip of your dick, I'm going to just bite it right off. And, and it'll work. Trust me, Ashley, it's going to work. Now, now, let me ask you this, baby. Is, uh, because he's, okay, you guys are having sex and because he can ejaculate on your face, I'm assuming, or at least I'm hoping you're using some sort of birth control. Are you, is he pulling the condom off and then jizzing on your face? Or are you not using anything? He, he removes it. What a gentleman. You see that, Lisa? Wow. You see that, Lisa? That, well, that's, why that's does she even allow right it there. in the first place? Why do you uh, well, allow she, you know, she's, guys? She's being, she's being 17. She wants her boyfriend. They want to they do crazy shit. But that's a lot of class. Uh, so you're, you're, you're fucking your girlfriend. And when you're about to uh, come, you pull out of her. Then you unroll the rubber condom just so you can ejaculate on her face. What a catch. What a catch this yeah, guy is. Total All right. Yeah, um, Ashley, uh, no. Yeah. You tell him no. Yeah. Okay? Hell yeah. If you don't like it, then it's no. If you like it, then continue. No worries. All right? Uh, okay. I'll tell you um, this. Yeah. Okay, I'll tell you this, Ashley. You're the girl here, right? Meaning yeah. you have the vagina. Yeah. You're 17 years old, okay? I need you... <laughs> To start believing in yourself you that without your vagina, he is miserable. Okay? You have to kind of repeat it to yourself. This is my vagina. He wants this more than I want his. So it's my rules. The ball is in my court. Ashley is the fucking man here. You're, as, as much as he's alpha male or he's the guy, he leads and all of this, you have what he wants. Mm-hmm. So that means you ultimately control the situation. If he's going to fucking jizz on your fucking face, you tell him you will never have sex with him again and he will change it immediately. And if he doesn't, you dump this fucker. He, he could always say he's not going to do it anymore and then last minute he's going to do it again. Then Bite his fucking dick off. <laughs> Get up and leave. <laughs> Bite it off. How old is he? How old is he? He's 19. See, so he's actually committing a crime. So when you bite his fucking dick off, you say, listen, first of all, I'm going to bite your fucking dick off. Then I'm going to tell everybody you're fucking raping me because I'm 17 and you're 19. And now you're going to be a headless, dickless fucking rapist. And that's what you don't want to be. <laughs> okay. And he'll change. Ashley, you're in control. Yeah. Let's get some self-esteem going here, baby. Come on. You're the one with the fucking vagina. Let's go. Yeah. Hello? Or next time he's sleeping, take a shit on his face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do that. That's what I would do. <laughs> All right, Ashley. Come on now, love. Stop acting okay. like an ugly girl. Fuck okay. That's the ugly girl behavior. Letting a guy fucking ejaculate all, all over your face every single time, even if you say no. That's ugly girl behavior. Stop it. You're hot. You're 17. Let's go. Have a good one. Bye-bye. All right. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Bye. Oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> She's going to get pregnant next week. Oh, my God. He, he's going to do this. He's going to be like, okay, so, so I can't ejaculate. He's, he's actually having sex with her in this conversation. So I can't ejaculate in your nostrils, right, anymore. So I'm just going to go ahead and jizz inside you. She'll be pregnant by fucking. She'll be oh giving birth by God. November. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah. You still want to make movies for these people? Come on, Lisa. <laughs> uh, Cleo, Singapore. What's going on, Cleo? You're 25 in Singapore. What's All up? Right. Hey. There you go. Hi, Cleo. You still want to make movies for these people? Come on, Lisa. Wait, whoa, whoa. We're on, we're on super delay. Hey, hey, turn off the thing in the background if you don't mind. Yeah, there you go. All right, so what's going on, Singapore? Yes. Can't hear you. Hi, Cleo. You turned off, I think you turned off your speakers and not your... Hello? Hello? Yes, can you hear us now? Yeah. There. All right, what's up? I need to... Hello? Cleo, we're no longer waiting for you. I swear I'll hang up on you in 10 seconds if you don't start talking. No, never mind. Let's hang up on her. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll try to get her back on the show. And we've got a lot of a bunch of calls here. Lisa, you doing well? Yeah, yeah. Cool. You can, you can follow Lisa on Twitter, by the way. It's uh, at Lisa Dino. 
L I Z D I N O. Yes. And uh, yeah, do check her out. I'm sure you have a Facebook or something like that that we can plug after this commercial break. So mm-hmm. stick around. It's Good Times and Well, the podcast season two, brought to you by Glow. Don't go away. Stay tuned. We'll return after this commercial break. We're always on the move. It's really important for us to get better and stronger for every competition that we get into. For all the different lifestyles that we have, some of us are graphic artists, filmmakers. We still find ways to get together. We put a lot of effort in practicing and rehearsing. Minsan may mga bigla ang shows or auditions, so it's really important for us to get connected. I use my Globe group messaging to get a hold of everybody else. Malayo na rin ang narating namin, marami na rin kaming napuntahan. So it's really important to get connected. Hey podcasters, Mo here. You ever watch the podcast, right? And you're sitting there and you're looking at our female celebrity guest and you're looking at her skin and you're like, wow, I'd love to have that complexion. Well, your answer is this, Glutamax, the official skin whitening partner of Miss Earth International. Available in capsules, soaps, lotion, deodorant, and face cream. Bikutis Mayaman with Glutamax. It's available in leading drug stores and supermarkets nationwide. What you've been missing on the factory. Were you the one who posted, James, regarding uh, the guidelines when it comes to checkpoints? Yes, I That's was. That's fantastic. Yes, I just made it up, but you know, I thought <laughs> it was. You made it up. <laughs> made it up. I mean, this time of year, right? Elections. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you never let the truth get in the way of a good story, okay? <laughs> Children do not follow this at home. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just so you know your rights, if you do get stopped by a checkpoint, you are not we're able to, to verify all of these, James. You're not allowed to run over them. That didn't make it here. So technically. <laughs> Now, number two, upon approach, uh, slow down. I guess that counts as not running them over. <laughs> Dim headlights and slow turn down. on cabin lights. Okay. Cabin lights. Mm-hmm. <laughs> lock all doors of vehicles during inspection. Since lock? Oh, lock. They might get uh, pissed off because nope. you're locking But that's doors. the thing. Okay. This is where they get you. And this is actually, I know we're making fun of it a little bit, but yeah. this is a serious issue. We've seen some people genuinely harass. Drugs are planted. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and, and other things, stories. you know. Um, a Justin Bieber CD is planted, which is even worse. Oh, yes, no. I've heard of that, you know. And there's no defense for that. Well, just there's Bieber really no defense. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> but Your Honor, we found this. I <laughs> throw, throw the book at him. The then CD as well. You, have to, you know, then after that, you have to submit your cell phone and everything. Yeah. And ne- next thing you know, you know, you have a Justin Bieber ringtone. <laughs> oh, Catch James Lord Deacon and the boys on Counterflow Wednesdays, 7.30 to 8.30, only here on the factory. Sabrina's Kitchen is going to be back in your kitchen. Sabrina, we're hungry. Okay, it's coming. Every Saturday, 6.30 p.m., Lifestyle Network, where else? Podcasters, listen up. Big announcement. The Chevrolet Sonic is a dependable five-seater subcompact vehicle, and it delivers sufficient power, fuel efficiency, refined ride and handling, and a remarkable entertainment system. The Sonic is the perfect Chevrolet vehicle for those who are looking to make their daily city commute or weekend getaway drives more fun and exciting. It comes in two great body styles, the five-door hatchback and a four-door sedan. Equipped with a new 1.4-liter Ecotec engine with double continuous variable cam phase, that's CVC, the Chevy Sonic provides efficient power and quality driving performance. Now, to further highlight the youthful, sporty, and fun characteristics of the Sonic, Chevrolet has equipped the compact sedan with high-tech convenient features such as Bluetooth connectivity and audio streaming capabilities that are commonly found only on high-trim compact sedans. The Chevrolet Sonic is available at all Chevrolet dealers. It comes with a Chevrolet five-year warranty, three-year free roadside assistance, and the services of a 24-7 Chevy hotline. Exactly, so find out every Sunday night, 8 9, hang out with us. Mm-hmm. We're going to be talking about everything under the sun. Girls, boys, 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 
My girlfriend says she hates me. It's Good Times with Mo, the podcast. Call the show tonight and get your love problem answered. Follow us on Twitter at GTWM Podcast. And visit www.motwister.com. Back on the podcast here Tuesday night. It is the 26th of March, if you just tuned in. If you download us, thank you very much. We appreciate it on iTunes. Always right up there on top of the uh, most popular shows in the country, and we appreciate that a million times over. Thank you very much, everyone. All right, let's get to some of these uh, announcements before we take more calls. Um, when it comes to services, we only want the best. Ain't that right, Lisa? We only want the best, right? Mm-hmm. In this day and age, we expect so much from services today. We want the services that can keep up with our needs, like Globe Business, Globe Telecom's arm that deals with corporate and SME accounts. They recently were awarded Important uh, International Organization for Standards uh, Certificates, or ISO Certificates. They received IT Service Management System Certificates for their state-of-the-art IT-secured site uh, enterprise customers. They were uh, awarded the Quality Management System Certificate for the Performance Management Center as well. This is good news for businesses because Globe assures that they can keep up with your requirements. It's not easy to get these accreditations. Yeah, there are or they are important milestones. Globe does not only believe in the compliance, they are committed to the best practices and policies to keep up with our ever-evolving needs and our ever-faster lives. You can expect 24-7 data uh, network support so you don't have to worry, and you can expect that Globe will continue to set the bar. All That's right, here I we go. Let's Globe take user. some more calls. 478 478- <laughs> Oh, are you? Well, good yeah. girl. Four seven eight seven nine five four is our phone number. Skype us, The Good Times Podcast, and get on the show. We will try to accommodate everybody who is on hold. And let's uh, start it out. Lisa Dino, by the way, on the show. Hey. Thanks, Lisa, for being here. Hi. All right, let's do it. Here we go. Okay. Let's go to uh, Cleo, who is in Singapore. Hi, Cleo. How are you? Hi, Logan. I'm good. All right, baby. What's going on? What's your question? Okay, so I have a boyfriend, Singaporean boyfriend here, and he wanted to see the Philippines. And the first thing that came up to his mind is Boracay. So, okay, let's okay. go, let's go. Book our flights. We book Singapore, Manila, Manila to Katiklan. But then my parents also know that I'm coming back to Philippines with him, and they don't even know that I have a boyfriend and my mom still knows that I'm a virgin and all but I just got the virginized here Aww. congratulations <laughs> yeah, so, mazel tov nothing congratulations <laughs> anyway continue <laughs> thank you and so and my friends are like I have two types of friends one friend is like don't tell your mom they don't like you're old already and have this another type of friend that you have to tell her mommy you have to tell her everything so I uh, the flight uh, we're going to Baraka in June on my birthday so I don't know if I should tell them or not Okay. You know, listen, I have, we all say we have the greatest moms in the world. I have a spectacular mom. I mean, my mom would let me <laughs> I mean, she let me rob a bank if I if I asked her because she's so supportive in every decision I want to do. Definitely. And I have hid maybe a dozen to two dozen flights from her in my time. And that's a very accommodating mom. You know, she I don't even know why I hid it from her. I, I just I just did. I mean, you kind of it's it's a part of the things you do, you know? So I don't see it being a big deal. Um you apparently feel like you have to share everything because you're like yeah, my mom doesn't know i'm divergent I'm, I'm a virgin but i just got divergent she shouldn't know that anyway <laughs> exactly but but so you you feel like you have this thing that you owe her every single story that or every little detail that goes on in your life yes you are of age i'm sorry what but she knows everything except this and she i kind of wanted to, to tell her she and all to know. no she doesn't why do you have to share it with her 
Tell me why. Because I love her, and we have this very. You don't love her any less. That doesn't mean you don't. If love she's her. your best friend, then she should know you're fucking some Singaporean guy. And she knows, but she doesn't know that we're in it, like we're in a relationship. But she knows what's happening with me. But if she was your best friend. Everything. Listen, if she was your best friend, she would know that you're dating the Singaporean guy. But she's she doesn't. Why doesn't she know that? Tell she me. Knows, Why did you hide that? She doesn't know that. She knows that we're in a wholesome relationship. Ah, <laughs> <you're> Christians. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you don't listen. No, we're Catholics. Um, Catholic okay, what, whatever. I, 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 I don't don't care. underestimate um, your mom. Maybe she knows. It's just that she's letting you grow. Okay, here's a sample. When I went to a gynecologist and she's... I, w- I went to a gynecologist here in Singapore, and then she said, "Oh, don't get props here. Tell the doctor that you're a virgin." But I kind of like it. But I said, "Okay, mommy, I will not tell. I will not have a pap smear because I'm a virgin." And you're supposed to have that pap smear at least uh, within the first six months after your first sexual encounter. All right. Um, <laughs> listen, uh, Cleo, I need you to yes. relax. You do not have to share this with your mom. I, uh, shit, please. It's just a trip to Barakai. I mean, come on. You're not buying a home. You're not migrating to another nation. You're just going to fly in for the weekend. You're going to get catch a little bit of sun and, and fucking sand, and you're going to haul ass back to Singapore. No problem. Relax. Are you sure? I'm not going to. Okay. Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. Cleo, you're 25. You're not 15. Exactly. It's different. Fine. You don't need a parental piece enough. of paper. That, yeah, you don't need a, some sort of, like in school, what do you call that? Permission slip. You're fine. You're going to Barakai with your boyfriend. No worries. It's a okay. wholesome flight. Say, Mama, so, if you want to. Okay. okay, wait a minute. Time out. One second. Why don't you want to tell her? Because it's, she's gonna judge me. Because you're spending know. the night with the that boyfriend. That I'm not a goody hotel. girl person anymore. That I'm not <laughs> this and that. I love it. I love it. I love this. I love how you're so scared of it. I mean, I really, I mean, I, I love it in a good way. I mean, it's nice to see this still, you know, co- around. Like, you still have to hide from your parents, even the sm- small, minute details, at just to give them, yeah, at 25, just to give them this impression that you're as perfect as anyone. Um, all right. Well, <laughs> listen, Cleo, no worries. Don't, 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 uh, don't tell her. And, and let me ask you this. Cleo, yes. I've said this many times on the podcast. Super high sex drive you have, yes? Well, he's low sex guy. I mean, he's short, but okay, yeah, high but, sex but guy. You, guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, you're you're high sex drive girl. I make mean, it's funny because right when you said hello, I, I heard it in the voice, man. That deep voice. I was like, ooh, we have a deep voice here. <laughs> Lisa, here's how it works. This is really? science, man. I'm telling you this. This is fucking true. And again, this is the million. I've, I've said this a million times on the show. So my apologies if you've heard it a million times. Yeah, Just okay. for the people who are new, girls with the super low voice, right, are hypersexual. Big time sex drive. I'll tell you why. They have testosterone in them. That's why they have the lower voice. Now, with the testosterone levels present, yes, with the testosterone (laughs) levels present in the female body, makes them super horny, like guys, guy level horny. So you, so you get these girls with the low voices. You already know they love sex. Uh, Can't can't satisfy that. I'm gonna be like a celebrity here. No comment. Yeah, well, because it's fucking true. All right. Thanks for the call, Cleo. So you started yeah. having sex just with... Just from oh, the giggle is... alone. I can have a oh. question. You're going to have Sandy all over your vagina in Barakai. <laughs> oh my yes, go. Go, it's Cleo. It's going to be a wild okay, Can you give me any Barakai, tips girl? how to... Like, what are the excuses that I can tell my parents when I'm in Barakai? Because it's my birthday and of course they're going to call me and Skype me and I'm like planning that I can... Skype with them and I'm in the room. Just say, just say, you know, mom, uh, what I'm going to do for my birthday is I'm going to go to these temples in uh, Malaysia. Uh, I'm going to take a bus. <laughs> I'm going to go to these re- re- religious, no spiritual, yeah. And what, bawa namang cell phone, kasi you're, we're going to go up to these temples with these monks. <laughs> and, and don't worry, it's, it has nothing to do with anti Catholicism. I'm going to just go there and kind of, uh, what's this, uh, when you hibernate, what's that fucking word? Uh, when people They're do when you pray? Pictures and Meditate. Facebook. Go, then go to fucking Malaysia and take a couple fucking photos. It's an hour away, you lazy shit. Just take a bus over there. Take a couple fucking photos of a temple and go, Mom, this is me in the temple, but bawal na ang camera sa loob. So, medyo na sa loob. Yeah. Go on Google. Oh, just grab a couple good, fucking pictures and, and Photoshop you standing in front of it. I mean, Jesus, come on. It's no, I, I should have a pre-travel before my pre-birthday yes. travel. And then I'm gonna, yes. just going to post it on my birthday. Yeah. Exactly. It's a day trip. Right? It's oh, a day trip. So smart, Mo. 
Yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you just take, take a bus, head over there, take a couple of fucking photos, and send it to your mom. The whole time she doesn't know that you're getting it. You're, you're 69 oh, in Barahai. Okay, <laughs> thanks. All right. Goodbye, Cleo. <laughs> Good Crazy <laughs> motherfucker. And Lisa. All right. Bye. Right, Have fun in Barakai. Thank you. Bye. My mom is so cool, man. I, I've had I've had moments where I called my mom. She's like, "Where are you?" I'm like, "I'm in Greece." When the fuck did you leave for Greece? Oh, like like three days ago. <laughs> well, you are a jet setter, so I guess it's no surprise. I know, but it's just it's it's like it's kind of like comic that this girl. Well, I guess because she's in Singapore and Baraka is rather far. But you've taken trips with a boyfriend without telling your parents, right, Lisa? I mean, come on. I don't know. Bar- with me and my mom, it's more like I don't really tell her things. Like, but she knows. I know that she knows, and it's just a little. It's it's just that understanding. I can I, I can sense it that she knows what's going on. I just don't, really don't need to tell her. We talk about it, but we don't. So, but it's a it's a good. It's a good um, form of communication where we just really don't have to really be literal about it, but yeah, she knows. I wonder. She knows. I wonder how many moms talk to their kids, like their single ch- children, about their sex lives. You know, like I know this. I know this one celebrity. She's a really big celebrity. So, I, and I don't want to name her because she's kind of my friend. I guess kind of because we haven't really spoken oh, wow, in a while. Oh, that's surprising. And- for you, mom. Well, no, no, no. no. We, she's kind of my friend, but she's a really big celebrity. And her mom and her, they talk about their sex lives like it's fucking nuts. Like the mom, I remember the mom was saying to an ex-girlfriend of mine. I mean, the, the reason why I know them because my ex-girlfriend and her are really, really good friends. And the mom used to always say things like, you know, when I was your age, I had a black book and all the boys that I wanted to go to their, you know, have them come over for a night. And, and, and she was, you should have this. And I'm like, holy. Holy fuck! And then she's telling this to the. I'm like, wow, this is really wild, you know. Uh, I mean, it's so it's wild because you rarely ever see that in our culture, where you have yeah. that Filipino mom talking openly to her 19, 20, 21 year old daughter about you know the need of having uh, multiple partners just so you can find some sort of sexual chemistry. It's like really crazy stuff, man. All right. Anyway, let's go to Liza. Liza, sixteen years old. What's up, Liza? Hello? Liza. Lisa, Liza, Hello? yeah. Hi, how are you? Hi, can you hear us? I'm fine. Yeah, I can hear you. Great. Hi. What's up, baby? Um, I just want to ask Your if question. Um, I'm going to, um, I'm going to obey my mother not to meet my dad because my um, I saw my dad fucking with my best friend. Yeah, I <laughs> love it. Woo! Hold on one second. Can you get? Can you turn off the air conditioner in the background or whatever that large suction noise is? Because this is a great story. All right. So you okay, walk wait. into a room. Yeah, yeah. Turn that shit off. Oh, this is on her end. I'm sorry. Yeah, Hello? yeah, yeah. No, but what a great story, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear us now? Yeah, yeah. All right, there's a little bit of a delay, Hello? obviously. All right, so it's okay. Never mind. Yeah, don't worry about it. You're fine. You, there's a little bit of a delay, Liza. It's probably the internet, but no worries. Let's push forward. So you walked in on your dad having sex with your best friend? Yes, absolutely. Holy fuck. And how old was your best friend? Because you're 16. She's 23 right now. It's like American beauty. What are you doing having a 23-year-old best friend? Um, um, inaanak siya ng mommy ko. And your this mom and dad awesome. are very much together? No, yeah, I think yeah. they separate. Oh, oh wait, wait. Who, yeah. So they, did they separate? They separated after you caught him fucking your best friend? Um, actually, I saw my dad after 13 years. Okay, now I'm confused. Hold on one second. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm now okay. That 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 last statement fucked me over. Where are we here? You walked in on your dad having sex with your best friend, and then your mom. Yeah. Correct me. Correct us if we're wrong. So your mom finds out that her husband is cheating, and then they break up, and now she doesn't want you to see your dad anymore. Is that what happened? No, she's never. Uh, no, she didn't. I actually dad. met my dad after thirteen yeah. years. They're separated, and um, the first who find out that my dad was fucking with my best friend was my mom. Okay. 
and, and then, um, then um, I went to my best friend's house to hang out with the weekend and um, I went to her room and I saw them fucking with each other that is so good wow where has your what dad great been guy. all these years I mean how come you only met him just recently um they are separated because um, my grandma, who is um, my mother of my dad, doesn't want my mom. So they separated a long ago, and then my dad left me. But um, I saw him in the pictures, so I can still recognize him up until now. And then, uh, okay, so, all right, all right, hold on. One last thing. I, I'm so confused. Hold on. Lisa, maybe I'm not understanding it. You are. So she sees her dad for the first time. After, After 13, 13 years, years and the in the bedroom her... of the... it Was that the first time she saw him after 13 years? Because that would be such a... That would be the yeah. best part of the story. Yeah. So you didn't see your dad for 13 years. And then all of a sudden, you go to your best friend's house. You open the door. There's a grown old man there, naked ass, with your best friend, fucking your best friend. And you're like, oh my God, you look like my dad. Oh, wait a minute. You are my dad. <laughs> That's what happened? Yeah. That's, that's a freaking that's, movie. This yeah. is the greatest phone call we've ever had on the history of the show. This is really the greatest call. Okay, hold on. Put her on hold one second. I need to talk to the staff here. Guys, we've taken 45,000 phone calls in these, in these 215 episodes or whatever the fuck we're in. Is this the greatest call we've ever received? Ange, you've been here since day one. What the fuck? And isn't here, uh, but yes. This is Miguel. Miguel, you've been here since day one. You were here during conceptualization. So fucking hell, is this the greatest call we've ever had? <laughs> or I'm just really, oh, I'm just OA. It, it is. <laughs> this yeah. is awesome. What and this girl odds? was the very, this girl, this girl was the very first person on hold tonight. And I just kept her on the side there the whole time waiting because I thought the question was stupid. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Well, all right. I just needed confirmation that this is the greatest. All right. Thank you. Liza, back to you. Yeah. All right. I love you. This is good. Okay. So what's the question? Um, I just want you to give me some advice if I would still be with my dad after I saw him fucking with my best friend or just obey my mom not to meet him or whatever. I don't know what to do. Ah. Uh. Wow. Now, now, did your best friend know that that was your dad? Um, she told me that she didn't know, but I let him saw my dad's picture, so I'm confused if she's really saying the truth. Okay. And this All right, girl hold on has, second. your best friend has, is in a relationship with your dad? Um, are they on know. or are they just fucking? Are they together? <laughs> well, he's They're inside her. Yeah, yeah, he was just fucking her. All right, hold on. Here's where, okay, there's two parts of the story that I love so much. The first part is it's entertaining and wild and it sounds real because the details are always there. Every time we ask her a question, she knows the answer immediately. And at 16, you can't fuck around with me like that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like this is, this is a legitimate, uh, this is a legitimate call. So I, this is what I love about this because it's real. Number two, Here's what I'm going to tell you, Liza, and I want you to listen to me clearly. Everyone in your life has disappointed you, uh, and I feel sorry for you, but I like you, and everybody here likes you. We, I mean, I want you to know that because I, I just imagine – I can't even begin to fathom what it would be like. And how, how old were you when this happened? Did this happen recently or did this happen a few years ago? Um, it happened when I was in fourth year. So what, how old I'm was 15. that? 14? 15. Okay, hold on one second. I can't even fucking imagine, fathom, absorb, whatever word you want to do. At 15 years old, I walk in as a female, walk in and see my dad, who I haven't seen since I was one, naked, fucking my best friend in front of my fucking face. Like, I can't even fucking begin to think what the fuck is going to go on in my mind, right? And the disappointment involved in my life. Like, 
I would be completely, there is no God right now because you're my best friend. You know that that's my father. You know that I haven't had my father and all I do is have these photos of him that I cherish and all of that stuff and you didn't tell me the whole time that you were fucking getting it in the ass by him and I had to walk in to see it. I mean, what kind of disappointment and letdown has people been bringing to you in your life? At this, such a young age, like walking in on your dad when you're 25 years old, butt naked, fucking your best friend is already traumatic. Walking in at 15 will rock your world. So, so my point here, Liza, before we get to the advice part is, God damn it, do I like you? Because you sound like this could, this is one of the worst things I've ever heard before on the show really as entertaining and funny as it fucking is it is about as sad of a fucking scenario as you will find because you have to you had to find out this way um so so i I just want to commend you for being what sounds to be a strong smart uh pleasant 16 year old because this is the greatest story we've ever heard and it's true that's what's awesome all right, so now that I've got that compliment out of your way because you've earned it, let's get to your problem. You want to see your dad, right? Wait, 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 hold on. Yeah. See, hold, shit. Fuck, 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 fuck. Hold on one second. Here's the thing. I want to know about the sex thing, though. I want to know about, I, I don't want, I don't know if I should ask her because I'm like, what position were they in when you walked in? Because this is a really, it's such a wild story. What position were they in when you walked in? Sorry? What position were they in? Was he on top of her? Was, was she on top of him? Uh, <laughs> um, he's on top of him. Uh, on top of her. So you saw his old hairy man ass right in front of your face when you walked in. Oh, oh my dog- god. I see, okay, the, the worst. All right, hold on. Close your ears real quick. Lisa and I, are, adults, are gonna talk. Close your ears one second, Lisa. The worst would be what sixty-nine. A way, what a way to meet your dad. <laughs> dad. <laughs> like, the worst would be sixty-nine. The dad oh. on top. Okay, okay. This is the worst. Okay, this has to be the worst thing. She walks in, sixty-nine. The dad on top, with him, with his face facing the door. So when she walks in, he's like, uh, hello, Anak. And then kind of waves. <laughs> that, or, or, come on, wait, hold on, Lisa, work with wait, me here. Come on, you're the, he, award, you're he, the award-winning actress. Wait, work with me here. What's the worst scenario? Cause I was thinking doggy's bad. Because doggy's kind of like, it's so, it's so animalistic and like aggressive when you do doggy, right? When you walk in, you're like, oh my God, doggy. But then 69ing is so like, He's old, but he's trying to still be young. So he's 69 ing because he's got this really young chick. I'm very curious uh, to know what was her reaction when she saw her dad's face. Like, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll work on that know, a little bit. Like, we're going to work on that. We're, I'm going to, we're going to ask her, but I'm talking about what's the worst possible position it could be in. It's like, how about 69 ing her on top, his balls facing the door. <laughs> so when she opens the door and sees these man balls and old man old man balls are ugly. And then she's like, "Oh my god, what are you doing? You're fucking you're 69ing an old man." And then all of a sudden, uh he puts his head up and goes, "Hi enough." Is that worse than my first one? Yeah. Cuz he's she's seen everything even before the face. And his hairy ass. And his hairy ass. And then, and then, and she's like, oh my God. Oh, yes, she's shocked twice. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's better the 69ing with her on top. That's right. And the dad's face is hidden because then she'll be shocked two times. It's like, oh my God, my best friend's 69ing this old man. And then, oh my God, it's my fucking dad. Cause, cause if you walk in initially with him on top on the 69, it's like, oh my God, my dad's on top of my fucking best friend and she's fucking in your vagina. Exactly. Oh, this is so oh good. Oh my God. I can already this imagine so it in a, in a scene. <laughs> oh, I love it. Can you do this movie? We got to do this movie. This is the greatest movie ever. Okay. Liza, back to you. Hello? Yeah. So he was on top of her missionary. Nah, all right. Yeah. See, all of a sudden, it's not, ex- not as exciting anymore, and we've calmed down. All right. Uh, and then what happened? Did your dad say anything when you walked in? I mean, wh- what, was the, what was the mood immediately after you caught them? I really... I really believe that they didn't notice me because I run out through the doors and go out and then shout and he's an asshole, that's what I say. 
and she's a bitch. All right. So, what's yeah. the question? You you want to see your dad now? I probably want to see him because you know I can't be that whole without him. I want to forgive forgive him though after all what he did. But my mom says that I should I should not because that would really hurt me a lot. You know, fucking with my best friend after 13 years, I saw him. Nah. That's really a whole. Thing. Uh. Okay. How, how are you and your best friend? I, I don't. I don't think. I don't think you need to see him to for any closure or anything like that. I mean, I really. Uh, I. I don't. Obviously, I need you to see a, a prof- I need you to get professional help because. This is kind of a very chaotic upbringing already with, with all of the things that have happened, like the, the, the father not being around. The, those things you need to work out. And then the trauma of meeting him for the first time when he's ass naked inside of your best friend is, is something that I don't think you just can get over by yourself. Mm-hmm. Liza, do you understand what I'm saying? Is, is you're not crazy. Yeah. They're crazy. They're fucked up. But they made you witness something so wild that you definitely are going to need to talk to someone, get some professional help, and to figure out, like, where you go from here. Like, oh, our advice is, is, I mean, we're pop culture shit. I mean, this is like fun, fun, happy, happy, laugh, laugh. And then I'm going to tell you my advice, and I hope it works, and I hope it's relevant to your life and stuff like that. And then... When I come when I come across a call that I believe needs true professional help, I'll tell you, hey, listen, this is not this is not for me. You need true professional help because this is such a wild, wild scenario. Mm-hmm. Now, I think you shouldn't see him right now. I think you should talk to a psychologist, get it off your chest, and and find out what you can do in in a, I don't, not really a medical standpoint, but in that kind of environment. A, a structured, controlled, professional environment, and then we'll find out what, what, what you know what you can do from there. I, I don't think you should see him right now. Have you spoken to your best friend since this? What? I'm sorry. Have, Have you, you spoken to your best friend? <clears throat> Not yet. Yeah. 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 I All right. Yeah. Listen. Stay away from them right now. I understand the disappointment. And if you can, talk to your mom about seeking some professional help so you can kind of address the situation with, with a psychologist, okay? And then we'll see what you're going to do about your dad. I say don't talk to him. What a disappointment it is. I mean, and, and, and why isn't he seeking you out? Like, if you're the one who wants to talk to him about it, why isn't he coming to you? Because after 13 years, he hasn't seen you, and all of a sudden, the, the first time he does... He's butt naked on top of your friend. I mean, it, it's it's thing. It, it's and did you confirm in fact that it's him? By the way. Yeah, because I um I asked my uh, their yaya or that um that was my dad. I saw um I gave their yaya a picture and they um told me that that was the man on the picture. Wow. Was on the bed, my best friend. Wow. Liza, this is yeah. awesome. I, I don't even know what to tell you. This is so good. I just say, don't talk to them right now. It would be nice. And, and please, d- don't long for your dad. He is a loser of extraordinary kind. And you know, he's not even reaching... for the last 13 years. Yeah, so. you're fine. You don't need him in your life, dude. You just, it's just one of those things you just cut your losses. You don't need your best friend. You don't need your dad. Let them be. You know, I mean, the, the, don't, don't reach out. He's, he's not going to bring anything to your life worthwhile anyway i mean considering the character of a human being he is now th- there's nothing he's going to bring to your life that's worthwhile at this point okay okay you get what i mean okay it's like what is he, what is he yeah. going to do is he going to turn your life around is he going to do something spectacular when he already was hiding from you and banging your best friend could he possibly bring anything positive to you of course not so you don't really need him and he never really seeked out okay. for you so why why reach out to yeah. him? Totally. All right? Okay. You're in a good you. position. All right, Liza. Thanks for the call, baby. We appreciate it. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Woo! Wow. Love it. Was... You don't write that shit. Hey, <laughs> and all this time, I was like, okay, Liza talking 
about her dad. Who knew <laughs> that this was going to be the case? My God. Yeah. So, and, then what, and what if all the sex talk is like, who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? She walks in like, you are. Well, what's going on here? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> oh, right. my God. That's really bad. <sighs> Woo. Oh, man. I mean, it re- oh, Gosh, I do. <laughs> um, hmm. Well, it wouldn't mean like if, if okay. Well, yeah, I do have I, I have a best friend girl, and if my dad was on top of her walking in, and I haven't seen him in a long time, I don't know. I mean, oh, I mean, I, I guess realistically, they won't be my friends anymore. Um, I won't long for my dad at all, mm-hmm. and and that's what I kind of the message I want for for Liza as well. And that, that, again, that's a personal opinion. I mean, your, your professional opinion is different, but my personal opinion is. There's really nothing he's going to bring to that equation that's going to make it better. And the fact that he doesn't even want to be present in her life. Why? And, and, and she meets him for the first time in this manner. What's the point? We can't take any more calls. That really has to be it. Because, I mean, well, listen, what do we have lined up else after this? Um, Love, she's 20 in Papanga. Her parents are fighting all the time. Uh, we have, uh, is it to go, is it okay to go out with someone whose son doesn't like you? Uh, I mean, these are all really important calls, but nothing tops that one. That's, we'll, we'll take your calls next week on, on, on Monday. We got to go anyway. But wow, what a call. Bravo. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Lisa, for being around to witness that. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> I enjoyed this. <laughs> Wasn't it just great? Wow. Take it a break. Back after this, wrapping up the show, we'll say our goodbyes. We'll say our. We'll pick our caller of the night. Gee, I wonder who that's going to be. We'll see. <laughs> Let's take it a break. See you guys in a bit. It's good times to roll the podcast season two, brought to you by Globe. Stay tuned. We'll return after this commercial break. It was a very memorable experience namin dalawa kasi plano namin, simple wedding lang, pero yung kinalabasan niya, extraordinary one. Kinagabihan pa lang yung wedding namin, August 7, grabe na talaga yung ulan nun. Yung mga atin ng kasal namin kasi nangihingi sila ng confirmation kung tutuloy ba namin yung kasal kasi sobrang taas na din ang tubig. Pati yung photographer po kasi tinatanong kung tuloy ba namin yung kasal kasi medyo may tubig pa. Ang dami na namin nare-receive na calls, pati kami dalawa nagtatawagan. Oh, pero ang nare-reply namin sa kanila, tuloy talaga ang kasal kahit na ano mangyari. Buti na nga lang kamo ang nakapag-register na kami agad yung kinagabihan pa lang nakaandi na kami parehas uh, naka all net uh, na kami combo ng blue kaya hindi masyadong hassle mm. pagte-text namin pagtatawagan sa ibang namin mga kasali sa kasal mm. pagpasok ko ng doon sa ibang wow para <laughs> hindi ko alam na nag-march pala lahat ng entourage ko sa ano sa tubig bago po kami labas ng simbahan sinalubong po kami ng mga tao na nakita sa amin talagang na amaze sila nagulat sila Ayun, nag-request sila ng ano doon ng, ng kiss. Pero talagang tama yung sinabi ni Father na for better or for worse, through thick or thin, through text and calls. <laughs> tama na, tuloy din yung kasal namin. We're glad to be globe. Hey podcasters, Mo here. You ever watch the podcast, right? And you're sitting there and you're looking at our female celebrity guest and you're looking at her skin and you're like, Wow! I'd love to have that complexion. Well, your answer is this. Glutamax, the official skin whitening partner of Miss Earth International. Available in capsules, soaps, lotion, deodorant, and face cream. Bikutis Mayaman with Glutamax. It's available in leading drugstores and supermarkets nationwide. What you've been missing on the factory. And now we're going to show you guys the new beta that just came out yesterday. It's God of War sent on the private beta for and PlayStation Plus. PlayStation Plus. Let's watch it, right? It's nice. It's a new playing already. Yes. Yep. There you go. And perfect <laughs> timing. <laughs> perfect timing. Well, before that, I was, I was kicking ass. So go with the theme of the show, How Not to Play. It's Robert Rice and Friends with Alfonso Martinez, Mickey Han, and Nigel Zalameo. Fridays, 6 to 7 p.m. Only here on The Factory. Then the maid got jaundice. Jaundice is different from jaundice. 
John Tears is Buntis. Like that. But she does not. <laughs> tears off? Tears off! Anyway, John Tears does not know. <laughs> this is professional show. I will put the merienda here. <laughs> so, John Tears. And I am now happy to present to you Carl Lutario. Look at this. Ganyan ba yan? Tapos? Ang puti. Ay, tapo. Dito ba? Pwede ba dyan? Pwede, pwede. Conceal. <laughs> Yan. Yeah, para sa show mo, ha? O. Oh. Aray ko. Ang mayaya ba? Pwede ba itong ano? <coughs> Zora. Pang ano ba to? Oil absorbing? Pwede pa itong pang nose line? <laughs> oh. Okay. May caution. A when, caution! When caution! <laughs> ah! Basta ng glamour te! Oh. When used for the first two weeks, more pimples will appear. <laughs> I'm going i Join your host, Carrot Nazareno, on Live Love Lols every Thursday, 7.30 to 8.30, only here on The Factory. Sabrina's Kitchen is going to be back in your kitchen. Sabrina, we're hungry! Okay, it's coming! Every Saturday, 6.30 p.m., Lifestyle Network, where else? Podcasters, listen up. Big announcement. The Chevrolet Sonic is a dependable five-seater subcompact vehicle, and it delivers sufficient power, fuel efficiency, refined ride and handling, and a remarkable entertainment system. The Sonic is the perfect Chevrolet vehicle for those who are looking to make their daily city commute or weekend getaway drives more fun and exciting. It comes in two great body styles, the five-door hatchback and a four-door sedan. Equipped with a new 1.4-liter Ecotec engine with double continuous variable cam phase, that's CVC, the Chevy Sonic provides efficient power and quality driving performance. Now, to further highlight the youthful, sporty, and fun characteristics of the Sonic, Chevrolet has equipped the compact sedan with high-tech convenient features such as Bluetooth connectivity and audio streaming capabilities that are commonly found only on high-trim compact sedans. The Chevrolet Sonic is available at all Chevrolet dealers. It comes with a Chevrolet 5-year warranty, 3-year free roadside assistance, and the services of a 24-7 Chevy hotline. Good Times with Mo, the podcast. Call the show tonight and get your love problem answered. Follow us on Twitter at GTWM Podcast and visit www.motwister.com. Back on the show here on this Tuesday night, fitting for the Holy Week that uh, we end on such a wonderful call. And I'm assuming, Lisa, that this is the person you're going for caller of the night. And yes, again, you know, uh, listen, no one can people. That. People on Twitter saying that that is a bullshit story. That is a true story, ladies and gentlemen. I am a human lie detector. I tell you, that, that is a real story. Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, she, she I did so. not, I did not catch lying. And I've seen, and again, remember we've given prizes away to uh, people who've lied. We've, I've, I've caught them lying. I'm like, all right, come on, admit it. You're fucking lying. And they're like, okay, I'm lying. That was a legit story. Oh, and I loved it. It was so good. I think I'm going to masturbate to that story tonight. Um, uh, let's talk to Liza. I, she's the caller of the night, right? Uh, Liza? Yes? Liza? Yes. Liza? Liza? You're back. 
Hello, dear. Hello. Congratulations, Liza. Okay, Liza. Here's the key. Okay, just for formality's sake, Liza. This is the uh, the the what is this? Geneva Convention of Podcasting and Radio Ethics. You have been chosen to be caller of the night. So no matter what you say, you are still going to get the prize. I need you to admit whether that was a true or bullshit story you just told us. That is a true story. I wouldn't say that if it is not true. Damn it, I'm such a bullshit asshole if it is not true, right? Yeah, that would make you. And I believe you that it's true, but there are people out there who are saying that it's not true. And that you can be an exceptional actress and stuff like that. I thought it was fine because your, your answers were spot on and quick. So I assessed that it would be a true story. So you're caller of the night. Um, and you have a chance of winning. Tonight is an iPhone 5. All you have to do is pick the right box. Which one has the iPhone? Now, if I'm not mistaken, it was in box number one last night. So I don't know if we put it back in back in box number one or maybe it's a number two or three. But you just pick one of those numbers. And I de- God, you deserve ten iPhone 5s for, for this story. But you know what? You can get one if you pick the right box. So go ahead. One, two, or three. Mm. Three. Three. Lisa, if you don't mind, can you open box number three and let's find out if our uh, 16-year-old friend here has a brand new phone. (gasps) iPhone 5. iPhone 5. Congratulations. Congratulations, Liza. Thank you. That's it? That's a... You're not excited? Oh, I guess, I suppose. I mean, it's a horrible thing to go through, but... I gave I'm sorry. Thank you. That's yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. All right. Hey. I think hey. it's an appropriate huh. reaction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's appropriate. I mean, listen, life's life shit on her. It's it's nice to give her something good. Yeah. All right. Thanks for the thanks for the call, baby. We appreciate it. Congratulations. Stay on hold because uh, our staff's going to get your contact information, and uh, you can go ahead and get that iPhone five. Thank you, love. Thank All right, you. Lisa. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for being on the show as well. And I, I wish you the best. Tonight. Uh, <laughs> I didn't really yeah, expect it's, this at all. <laughs> it's been interesting. So any, anything you want to plug real quick? Because I know you're involved in a bunch of stuff. And it's, instead of me enumerating it, anything you want to throw out there, just watch out for Because I know these two movies you're doing. Well, I think the Uno magazine first is still available. Uh, the February okay. and March edition um, with my food article. Oh, Twitter. At Uno Mag. A mag available still to um, national bookstores, and you're fully booked. fully booked. And then um, I have a new movie coming up, Bingo Leras, with Yula Valdez uh, for the Cine Filipino Film Festival. And um, my movie, In Nomini Matres, with B-Boy Ramirez, Algat Maitan, Clara Ramona, uh, coming out, I think, in May, Mother's Day. So, yeah, watch out for that. All right, Thank sounds you good. So much, Thanks for being Mo. on the show. It's Thank nice you, Uno Magazine, you. by the way. Yes, it is nice after all these years. And uh, thanks, Uno Magazine, as well, for uh, help co- helping uh, coordinate you being here. And hope we can see Thank you. Thank you, more, man. Man I guess, Illustre. yeah, more celebrities from uh, Uno to come by the show so we can have such great discussion about these very interesting lives that people have. All right, we'll see you guys on. Monday, we are taking a Holy Week break. We want to thank Legend of India at 114B Jupiter Street, Bel Air 2, Makati City for catering, for catering or delivery. You can call 836-4232. And, uh, all right. Yeah. We'll, I, I guess we'll see you in April, if I'm not mistaken, right? So happy Easter, everyone. Thank you, staff. Thank you, everybody, uh, for, for having me. Doing such a great job and for uh, saving what was a technically difficult night early on, uh, on the program. It ended very well, though. All right. So we'll see you guys. On, uh, on in April, April 1st. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Good Times with Mo, the podcast, was executively produced by Mohan Gumata, engineered by Miguel Alfindo, and operated by Icon Media E. Special thanks to Magic 89.9. <laughs> you can follow Mo on Twitter at www.twitter.com slash DJ Mo Twister. Email him at goodtimeswithmopodcast at rocketmail.com.